Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about how to store your barn, your, your barn wood before you start building your barn um, and how not to store your barn wood before you build a barn. Um, what you see here is an example of two things, two mistakes uh, that are made when storing barn wood. This is on a job site that we arrived at after the wood was delivered and you can see we started to remove some of these tarps. This is something that you do not want to do. Do not tarp your green barn wood because what it's going to do is it's this wood is is pretty high has a pretty high moisture content uh, because it's sawn green. Um, so you do not want to cover it or you especially in the heat because um, you will cause it to mold. Now if you don't cover your barn wood, your your lumber, it will discolor. It'll turn gray. So in order to avoid that, it's best not to stack your lumber out in the full sun, where you can see this uh, stack of lumber is. Sometimes you can't avoid that. Um, in that case, the best thing to do is put something sacrificial on the top of the stacks. Um, it might even be better to take and unstack these. You know, you've got a couple, actually you've got three bunks stacked on top of each other right here. What you want to do is lift these bunks down and, and spread it out wider. Um, and then cover the top, the entire top with, you know, old plywood or, or pole barn steel or um, something that just cover the top of the stack. Um, that what that'll do is it'll keep the sun off the top and it will allow air to flow through these um, gaps you can see um, I'll give you I'll show you a closer picture but you can see that there's gaps in between uh, the stacks of lumber and then there's little sticks we call stickers in between these stacks and what that does is it allows the air to flow through the stack of lumber uh, to keep uh, or to to begin the seasoning and drying process, anywhere that uh, the wood can touch each other or where it can, um, where a, mu a moisture can accumulate and not leave the wood, is is a place where um, the wood can start to stain and start and start to get a black color. Uh, it, it grows a, a, a kind of fungus, and eventually it could cause mold. Um, so, so you want to leave this open while you're while you're building. Um, if you have to restack any lumber, you want to sticker it up so that the air can flow through in between the the layers of wood. Okay, guys, you can see this is a little bit closer. You can see the stickers between the layers of wood, and then the air can flow right on through. Um, they'll even gap in between the boards a little bit um, to let some air through there because if any time you have these wood this wood touching each other uh, there's a potential for for moisture to get trapped in there and, and to cause uh, problems like discoloration and that type of thing if you do get discolored wood it's not a huge deal um, just a water and bleach solution you can wash it off with a with a brush um, some of the staining is not going to come out. Um, if you're looking for all yellow wood, the best thing to do is to cut your wood in the winter time. Uh, if it's cut in the summertime, it's highly likely to uh, uh, get a uh, what they call a blue stain color, um, and that's just the nature of, of pine. Uh, and actually, it's the nature of a lot of woods. It's it's a natural fungus that that starts to uh, uh, attack the wood. But once the wood is dry, um, that fungus um, uh, stops its attack on the wood. It, it had no longer has, a, has anything to eat. So as long as this wood is dry, um, there's nothing to worry about, or as long as the wood gets dry. It's when it stays wet is when you have problems with fungus and mold. Here's just a closer little view of uh, um, where you where the air can flow, and you can see we've we've torn we uh, we took a lot of these tarps off because the the homeowner, you know, in their efforts to preserve their wood, um, covered them with tarps. Uh, it's 
pretty much a bad idea. Another thing uh, that they did that probably isn't a good idea is uh, th you notice this wood is stacked in uh, an area that has been excavated so there's bare dirt. Uh, a lot of times what's going to happen is rain is going to come down and it's going to hit the dirt and it's going to splash up and it's going to cause dirt to get up on the wood and discolor that as well. So you want to try it, the best you can to put your wood in a shaded spot um, in the grass or in an area that it's not going to get splash up from the uh, from the wood from the dirt around the construction site. So what I would recommend is is to have some sort of forklift on hand or have a small trailer uh, and have your wood staged, you know, in an area that is uh, shaded, um, and then just drive back and forth with the forklift or or the uh, small trailer when you need the the lumber that you're that you need for the day. Um, it doesn't add a lot to the project. It just uh, it, taking the extra time like that will help preserve the look of your wood. Here you can see even the beams. These are three by sixes. Um, and they, they, even these have stickers in between the layers. Now, if you order a barn kit from us, this is the way your wood is going to come packaged. It's going to come packaged in a bunk like this that's been that's uncovered. It does not have a lumber cover on it um, for a very specific reason, and that is to let this uh, kind of let the air flow through it. Um, but everything, even our beams, are stickered. You can see that uh, one stack was covered. We hadn't quite got to that yet, but we did eventually. Um, you can see here, you can see, you know, the six by sixes, six by eights. Uh, these are all, you know, they have a, a two by four or two by three in between them uh, to keep the uh, um, to keep the wood separated and you can see here where the water the the water the rain had already started to splash up on these beams and these had only been sitting here for a week so um, we had to wait for the uh, concrete guy to finish his work before we could get started here you can see even as we're working on it and we're installing the t-plates we're, we're leaving these uh, beams separated Again, this is something, you know, at least they did one thing that was kind of good and they kept the tarp away from the side of the stack so the air could flow in around. Um, now, ideally you want to, you just, you want to leave this open completely, uh, but at least that's better than wrapping the, 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 you know, the tarp right up next to the stack. Um, there is a way you could do this if you don't have shade and um, you need to uh, you want to cover it with a tarp you could um, again just cover the very top of the stack and not have anything hanging down on the ends or the sides and the way you would do that is stack stacks next to each other and then stretch the tarp out over the top and then roll anything you know that's that's the, the that hangs over the edges, roll it up and then clip it or bungee cord it so that it doesn't come back and fall, you know, down the side. Um, and even then, you may get a situation where on the top of the uh, stack underneath this tarp, you'll start to get some some uh, some blue stain or some some uh, mold growth. So. Even if you do that, what you want to do is, is put something up here to keep that tarp, you know, put a few stickers up there to keep that tarp off off the, the boards themselves so so that they're not actually touching the top layer of boards. Um, or you put something sacrificial on top. Either way, um, keep this, uh, 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 keep the airflow flowing through this, uh, uh, the stacks of lumber. Um, another idea you could use is if you had an open-sided building, you could stack it in that, or um, 
you know, if you're working, if you're working uh, during the fall or early spring when it's, you know, below 60 degrees, it's not a huge concern. It's when it gets up, you know, 70, 80, 90 degrees uh, for continued period of time that that uh, that that things really can start going uh, discoloring in in a hurry. Um, so you want to be uh, aware of that and make sure you prevent that in your stack of wood. So, um, and this is really true for all species, but pine in particular likes to discolor. You can see actually right here a little bit of discoloration already from that wood just sitting next to the next beam. A uh, little discoloration there. And a lot of times um, some of this discoloration is going to happen no matter what. Even if you have it separated, um, it's still going to discolor because of the heat. Um, the only way to avoid that, like I said, or to minimize that, uh, there's no way to totally avoid it. Uh, but the only way to minimize that is to, you know, keep your wood separated as best you can and try to do the cutting of the timber in the winter time, if at all possible. Right here. This is a machine that works really well uh, for a lot of different tasks in, in your uh, barn construction. Um, you'll see in, in future videos where we use, we actually use this, it's a man lift, but we actually used it to set some of these beams in place because it's, um, you know, adding the beam to the lift one at a time did not exceed the, the lift capacity. Now, I will give you one caveat about that. Do this at your own risk. If you, if you put a man in the basket and you set a post, um, there is a there is a chance that they could uh, you know that that machine could capsize and, and cause serious serious injury. Okay, so don't do this um, without someone who is fully aware and confident and knows what they're doing. Um, and it would be really best if you just use when you're using it to set beams. Uh, there's usually controls below so that you can drive the machine from below and set the posts um, so that you don't have to uh, be in the basket itself now uh, and uh, you always want to have at least two two people on the job site at all times even if you're not running the machine um, if somebody gets hurt you're gonna want someone else there that can go for help um, at least two people um, so there have been time after time you know guys working in the woods alone they'll get hit by a tree or, or, or get pinned down and, and they could have very well been rescued if people had known where they were or they could have or, or somebody was there working with them that could have went for help um, so there's no need to be um, there's no need for that yeah you can uh, work smart and uh, make sure that you um, that you're you're taking the right precautions um, when you're building the project we don't want the a front project like this to become a uh, um, you know a, a, a tragedy so uh, anyway just be careful out there when you guys are working on your barns and uh, if you feel unsafe doing anything at all, either get help, get somebody that knows what they're doing, or um, hire somebody. Um, but don't try to do it on your own. Don't stretch yourself. Um, this is one situation where your comfort zone is something that you definitely want to stay within. <laughs> um, other things in life, you want to stretch your comfort zone. This this kind of thing do not stretch your comfort zone if you are not comfortable with doing something don't do it so but anyway end of safety message <laughs> i hope you like this video um click the click the uh subscribe button and like and share and uh um we will catch you on the next one and have a great day thanks